Joining me now here on the MMA Report, man, it's going to be the main event of Hard Rock MMA 105 on February 2nd. He takes on Chris Dunn. It is Lance the Torpedo, Lawrence Lance. I appreciate the time. How's things going, man? Things are going good, man. I just finished up a two-hour grounder uh, in jiu-jitsu. Um, the oxygen chamber this morning, feeling great. Uh, pro debut came back in 2016. You've won four, uh, four, uh, all four of your pro fights, all by submission. Uh, the the name that really stuck out to me was Jonathan Pierce, who's been on a nice little roll uh, since you two guys have fought. What what ultimately brought you uh, into martial arts? Well, um, it's something I've always wanted to do, man. Since I was just a kid growing up, I was, you know, I was wanting my mom to get me into karate or kickboxing or something, but you know, just financially we couldn't do it. So as soon as I turned 16 years old, I I met some guys who were training for an MMA fight in a garage, and I just said, hey, you know, I showed up, started uh, getting my my butt beat up by them, and um, you know, kind of fell in love and. At 16, I decided that's what I wanted to do, and I've been working towards it ever since. Is there a particular aspect of martial arts that uh, was the first love? Definitely jujitsu. Definitely jujitsu. You know, has always been um, more of a um, more natural to me than anything else. And of course, I uh, mentioned uh, we've seen that jujitsu being shown off inside your fights, all, all submission victories here. But one of the things that uh, you know, talking to people about you, they said, you know, one of the things that can kind of be frustrating for you is the lack of getting fights. You know, guys aren't exactly you know signing up to to compete with you. I mean, how do you make sure that just doesn't let get you down? Uh, you just got to take it as a compliment, and you know, at least I'm not injured. You know, you just got to look at the bright side of everything. You know, I'm young. It's not like I'm 35. You know, I'll be 25. Still got another whole another half year before I'm 26. Um, I mean, I would like to have a lot more fights on my resume by now. That was the plan, especially uh, last year. I was planning on getting a lot, but it ended up being none. But, you know, having a bad attitude is not going to do anything for me. Uh, do you just try to look at the positive aspects of that and say, you know what, well, I didn't get the fights I wanted – I was able to grow and evolve as a martial artist. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely, definitely think have that mindset after this year, I, I evolved and grew a lot through uh, 2018, just getting ready for fight after fight, um, honing my skills, you know, fight camps always make you better. I believe, you know, as long as you're not getting injured, which I train right. So I don't get injured. And, um, Yeah. And Chris Dunn, the opponent here, what's your overall thoughts of him as an opponent? As an opponent, he's my toughest test I've I've ever fought um, by far. You know, he's a very seasoned veteran. He's had over 20 professional fights. Um, I think like four of his losses, those guys are in the UFC or Bellator right now. And half of them went the, you know, went the distance. So he's got hard earned losses. And, um, you know he's been he's been fighting since since I got into the game, and um, you know it's definitely a true test to see the veteran against you know the young up and comer, and um, it's getting a lot of local attention. I mean I've already sold a lot of tickets, um, and I haven't even really been trying yet, and um, you know I'm really excited to to get this victory because I'm gonna I'm gonna be really proud of this one. What do you see as your key to victory in this fight? Uh, the key to victory, you know, not letting him fight his fight, not let him dictate the pace, not letting him just pressure me and, you know, control the fight. You know, for me, it'll be controlling the fight, um, you know, without giving away too much. You know, I'd, just not letting him fight his fight, not going out there and be the hunted, being the hunter would be the key. Is your overall view of the fight game of this about me? It's not about my opponent and to where, uh, you know, maybe you just you concentrate much more on yourself as opposed to concentrating on what in this instant Chris does well. Um, well, I mean, I, th- I believe it's a little of both. You know, you got to know yourself and you have to know your opponent. Yourself and you know your opponent, you know the outcome of, you know, a thousand battles. That's what Sun Tzu would say, something like that. 
But um, you know, you you gotta you gotta take in both. Like I study my opponents. I know what they do. You know, I gotta assume they're knowing what I what I do, so I can't go out there and be too predictable. Uh, I mean, at it, it, the smart, they're gonna assume I'm I'm gonna try to take them down and choke them out. At least that's what I would think if I was gonna fight me. So maybe I don't want to come out there and go right out the bat for a takedown, but maybe I don't want to take down. I'm not gonna give away too much. I, I'm not I'm not um, feeling like there's a big gap in our striking. You know, his to mine, I, I don't see a big gap. I mean, from the outside looking in, I could see where he could think that, but I don't. You mentioned about not being predictable. Has there ever been a time in your career where you've looked back on a fight and you felt you were too predictable? Uh, I mean, I guess that thought never really came to my head. I mean, I've went back and looked at my fights and been like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, or I know better than doing this and that, but I don't think I've ever done anything that was that where they predicted it where they were able to capitalize on it because they predicted it. I've never seen that. You mentioned about your love of jiu-jitsu. We, we know what you've done as a pro. <laughs> Is there a part of you that's itching for that knockout victory? Um, I, I did get two knockout slash TKOs as an amateur, and those were pretty cool. I kind of seen them coming, but I wasn't really going for them. Um, yeah, I would love a knockout. I mean, apparently that's what people – like to see more than um you know just someone getting choked out so whatever you know clocks my ticket to the ufc faster i would love a knockout you know i'm i'm always going in there to hit him in the face so you know if he gets knocked out that's up to him how, how quick do you think a, a potential ufc offer could come for you i mean i wouldn't say that i i wouldn't expect it this year you know if i get two more wins this year i get you know i get this victory over chris dunn maybe get another fight here locally or, you know, maybe my manager finds me something on LFA or something, get a quick turnaround victory, and then I get a, a shot um, on Dana White's contender series or Dana White's looking for a fight or whatever. You know, he's always got something coming out for the young up-and-comers. So I could see me getting a shot at that, something, you know, towards the middle of the year. But if not, you know, we'll just keep going. And, of course, uh, this fight here is February 2nd, Hard Rock MMA 105 in Kentucky. As always, man, I appreciate time. Let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media and, of course, those sponsors that help support you. Oh, yeah, I would like to give a big shout-out to um, Murphy and Attorneys at Law. They're, um, they're a big Louisville firm here. They're probably the biggest Louisville firm here for you know dis- uh, car wrecks and wrongful injuries. Um, New Age Gifts, um, Oxybaric, the Hyperbaric Auction Chamber has really been uh, hooking me up this fight camp in all of 2018, helping me, keeping me healthy. Um, and I, I got a lot of, too many sponsors to name right now off the top of my head. You'll see them all on my shirts and my, and my shorts. But um, uh, you can follow me at the, the, the Tornado MMA on Instagram and the Tornado 145 on Twitter.